Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with Redefined Horizons. This is another one of our Field Survey Friday videos. It's another video in the series we're doing on GPS. In this video, we're going to talk about GPS ephemeris files and almanacs. So this, uh, the, the concepts that we're going to talk about uh, apply to other uh, GNSS systems like Compass or GLONASS or Galileo, but what we're talking about today is specific to GPS. Okay, this is not information that I discovered on my own. This information comes from Mr. Jan Van Sickle's excellent book, GPS for Land Surveyors. Uh, it's a must-have for the modern surveyor. You need to have it on your bookshelf. I don't pretend to understand everything in that book, but it is a good book. Um, I don't know if I've said this in my other videos on, on GNSS or GPS, but you, know, you, don't, you don't have to be an electrical engineer or a rocket scientist to use GPS uh, properly as a surveyor, but you do need to under, understand these concepts. Uh, you know, you could say the same thing about it, the EDM on a total station, right? You should have some basic understanding of how that works. That helps you to use the tools properly and to analyze errors properly as a land surveyor. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing these videos on GPS. Uh, another reason is because you got to know some of this terminology and some of these concepts to pass your CST exam or your LSIT exam. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the ephemeris and the almanac in GPS, what it is, why we use it. Okay, so both of those come in what's called uh, the navigation message. So the GPS signal that goes to the receiver is separated into different chunks. Okay, different chunks or messages. Okay, and one of the one of the chunks or messages that's sent down is what's called the navigation message. It is also confusingly called the GPS message, but it has four pieces of information in it. It has the ephemeris file, the almanac file the health, information about the health of the satellites and the ionosphere. Okay, now we're going to talk some more about the ephemeris and the almanac, so I'm going to come back to those. Part of the navigation message just lets the receiver know which satellites are healthy and which satellites might be having a problem. So GPS satellites like other technology gets old, malfunctions, has problems, gets damaged, they get damaged. So you want to know you want your receiver to know that. It also contains information on the ionosphere. I don't think we've talked about this before. The ionosphere is a layer of charged particles in the Earth's upper atmosphere, and it distorts the speed at which the GPS signals travel. GPS signals are radio waves. They travel at the speed of light, which is very fast, but the ionosphere can affect that. So the navigation message has some information about uh, the, how the uh, ionosphere might be affecting the GPS signal. Okay, where does all this information come from? It's actually calculated by the ground control stations, and then sent up to the satellites, and then it comes back down to the receiver. Okay, so all this information is important. Okay, so we're going to talk real quick about why the ephemeris and the almanac are important, and then we'll go into a little bit of detail about the ephemeris. Okay, so the ephemeris tells your receiver where all of the satellites have been over, for example, the last 24 hours. Okay, so it's time-based, because you got to remember the GPS satellites are moving in relation to the surface of the Earth. They are not geostationary. Okay, so the ephemeris says, all right, receiver, here's where these satellites have been. Okay, here's their relationship to where you're at on the surface of the Earth. Okay, that's going back in time. The almanac looks forward. Okay, so it says, hey, here's where, receiver, here's where we think these GPS satellites are going to be um, in the future. And I don't know how long the almanac lasts. I'd have to look that up if it's 30 days or 60 days or 6 months. Okay, the reason why the almanac is important is when you first start your... GPS receiver, you first power it on, it has to search for, find, and lock on to the different GPS satellites. If you have a current almanac or an, a, an almanac that, that if, if your receiver is relatively close to where it was last locked onto the satellites, the almanac greatly speeds up the process to initialize and, and find and lock on to those satellites. Okay, so... If you have a good good almanac, you can get what they call a warm start. Okay, in other words, your 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 receiver is going to find and lock onto the satellites more quickly. If you've never powered your receiver on, or it hasn't been used in months, or you ran it in California and now you're in New Hampshire, your almanac your almanac's not going to be any good, and you're going to have what's called a cold start. Okay, so it just takes longer to lock. Now, that really matters if you're a land surveyor using GPS in the field because that startup time, um, you know, can affect your productivity. So, almanac, al almanacs are a good thing, okay? But they, they just help your, help your satellite find, they help your receiver find the satellites. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the ephemeris. And the, the almanac and the ephemeris are fairly similar, right? They both provide information on the location of the, of the satellites. Okay, so the, the ephemeris has six, six parameters or six pieces of information. Okay, so I want to give those to you. So the first one is the size of the orbit. Okay, for, the, for, for each satellite. Okay, now you got to remember that the orbits around the Earth are ellipses because of gravity and Earth bulges at the center. Okay, so they're, they're not perfect circles. So they give you the size of the orbit. What they do is they give you this, the length of the semi-major axis, which is the long axis of the ellipse. Okay. And then the second piece of information is related to that, and that's the, the amount of flattening in the ellipse. So what that allows you to do now is you can calculate the shape of the ellipse. The third piece of information is, let me just check my notes here, called the ascending node. And I'm gonna explain what that is here on the other whiteboard. Okay, so the ascending node, if this is a top-down view of the Earth, and this is Greenwich Meridian, zero meridian longitude, the ascending node is the angle from Greenwich, the longitude at which the satellite orbit crosses the equator. So just helping you position the orbital plane in relation to the Earth. Okay, that is also what the fourth parameter does, which is called the inclination. So if you look at a top down, a top, or sorry, a side view, a profile view of the Earth, the angle of inclination is the angle between the orbital plane and the equator. Okay, and almost all of the GPS orbits are at some angle, so none of the satellites move over perfectly over the equator or the axis of rotation. So they're all at an angle. That's what the inclination is. Okay, the other thing, the other piece of information they give you <clears throat> is that there's actually two pieces, but we group them together, so this is five and six. So this is called the uh, argument of perigee. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Argument of perigee and the true anomaly. And I'm not going to pretend I fully understand what these are. I, I tried to understand, and I even did some research on the Internet, and I didn't fully understand it. So argument of perigee and true anomaly. What those do is those tell you where in an orbit the satellite was is at a particular moment in time. Okay. So you can see that in my third diagram there. So if this is a if this is a, a top-down view of the orbit, uh, these two pieces of information are going to tell you where in the orbit the satellite is. Okay, what position? Okay, with those six pieces of information, what that allows you to do is that allows you to calculate what we call the Earth center Earth fixed coordinate for the satellite at any moment in time. Okay, that's really important because you got to remember the, the satellites in the sky when we're using GPS, they're like our control points. Okay, only they're moving, right? Every second, they're in a different place. Okay, and so when we're measuring to a satellite to determine our position, we got to know where all the satellites are or we can't figure out where our receiver's at on the Earth. That's why an ephemeris is really important. Now, the ephemeris that comes down in the navigation message is called the broadcast ephemeris. Okay, and it's called that because it comes down with broadcast with the satellite signal that the receiver gets. Okay, and uh, it's, it's, it's just approximate, okay? So it's not perfect. And one of the issues is if you, look at a, if you look at an actual satellite orbit, it doesn't follow a perfect ellipse because the Earth's gravity is shaped like a potato and it tugs on the satellite in, in an irregular pattern, okay? So, you know, a perfect ellipse is like this, but the actual path the, travelites, the satellite travels is like this funky blue, blue shape here, the potato because of gravity, okay? So what happens is there's ground, there's ground control stations that track the satellites over time. And then there's some very small, smart folks at a handful of organizations that take all that information and they process it and they kind of best fit the orbital ellipse to the actual path of the satellite. And they come up with what's called a precise ephemeris. And that's what we use when we do static GPS processing. We'll use a precise ephemeris because it gives us a little better idea of where the satellites are than the broadcast ephemeris. Okay, and there's a lag time. That's the disadvantage. 
right? So I think the ultra rapid ephemeris you can get within six hours. The rapid I think is within 12. And then the final, the final precise ephemeris, I think might, you might have to wait a week. Okay, and I talk about that on some of my videos on static GPS processing. All right, I think that's everything I wanted to cover about GPS ephemeris and almanacs. And of course, remember the other satellite systems, Galileo, GLONASS, Compass, uh, they, they are going to follow similar principles, right? So they're going to have similar elements in their system for all the same reasons, right? To help the receivers, uh, help the receivers position in real time. Okay, so appreciate you guys tuning in to this uh, Field Survey Friday video, and uh, we hope to catch you, on, catch you on the next episode. We will do some more on GPS in the future.